Konnichiwa, everybody, and welcome back to Ordinary Adventures. Today, we are exploring the Harajuku district of Tokyo, Japan. This is one of the most kawaii areas of the entire city. But before we get to the cute stuff, we'll explore the beautiful and historic Meiji Shrine. We'll start the morning with coffee featuring the most amazing 3D latte art. And on Takashita Street, we'll try a bunch of cute desserts from sugar glazed strawberries to crepes with full cheesecake slices inside. We'll also explore some of the stores, including a gachapon store filled with over a thousand mystery capsule machines. And we'll even check out some of the local fast food options, including different menu items from McDonald's. And we'll end the night at a delicious gyoza restaurant in Shinjuku, and we'll see some street magic. And finally, Godzilla blow fire from above our hotel. Why come with us on this adventure? So we're up early in the morning and we're headed to Harajuku. I got myself my Fanta melon soda and I'm ready for all the kawaii, all the cuteness and all the like cute little food so we can find. Today we gotta go on a different train line. Can we find it? Yes, I believe in us. We're experts, remember? So we finally found our first vending machine that sells something besides drinks. Look at all the options, there's all these different ramens and soups and there's even some dumplings. Oh, I want dumplings. That sounds delicious. And then there's a vending machine behind you that sells diapers. What can't they sell is the question. <laughs> you got a seat today. We did it. We figured out another train line. I'm very proud of us. Well, let's say that once we actually get there. True. If you want to see how confusing <laughs> their transit maps are, this is it but we basically got on here and we're just going to stop, so it's pretty easy. First off this morning, we're going to the Meiji Jinku Shrine. Tokyo Signature Shrine. So we were told to come here early in the morning, so we are here before 9 a.m. And this shrine is dedicated to Emperor Meiji and Empress Shokin, whose reign from 1868 to 1912 coincided with Japan becoming a modern nation. I don't know why, but for some reason, I expected this to be kind of like shoved in the middle of the city. And I wasn't expecting so much nature out here. It is absolutely beautiful. And we are here like in mid-October and the weather is perfect. So right before you go into the gates, there's an area where you can actually purify your hands and your face. And you gotta do that before you go into the temple. When you walk through the Tory gates, you leave the mundane world and you enter the sacred world and it is custom to bow as you enter. It is so incredibly beautiful here. And this place apparently was built in 1920, but during World War II was destroyed so they had to rebuild it. But it feels like it's been here since 1920. And I did want to point out that this place is completely free to visit. So I would highly recommend coming here if you come to Tokyo. things here is there's this area where you get this like little wooden box and you shake it around and you get to pull out a stick and the stick has a number on it and there's a corresponding drawer yeah where you get a traditional poem written by the emperor and we got number 20 and it says while still reflecting the image of lofty mountains water in the streams strives to seek humbler levels as should these hearts of ours I don't know what that means but it's beautiful you know what? I, I like the way that sounds. <laughs> I feel like we came at the right time because there's a lot of people getting here as we're leaving. So pro tip, come before 9 a.m. should mention that there are a couple areas here that they don't allow photography or videography. Obviously, we did not show those, but they are as beautiful, if not more beautiful. Next up, we... <laughs> All these leaves are falling. Wow, how beautiful. Next up, we're going into the heart of Harajuku to go to a cafe that makes latte art and I could use a coffee. Oh my gosh, we just like went through like the cutest little back alleyway, like that was so beautiful and we got to the end of it and I was like, we should have been filming that, it was so cute. Yeah. I was like, we should move here and Peter was like, no. I'm like loving Harajuku so far. 
and we haven't even like done anything. Super. But cute. we could play with guinea pigs if we wanted. You think they have Sonic? What is even going on up there? So the place that we're going this morning is called Cafe Reissue, and it is down a small little alley here in Harajuku, and it is cash only. So make sure you got cash on you. I don't even know what I'm gonna do in there because they make this amazing latte art, and I don't know if I want them to make Gizmo, Pixel, like a hippo, like I don't know. So they do 2D or 3D latte art, and they can do some of the characters they're known for or they actually can do photos from your phone. Okay, with much deliberation, we decided to just go with Pixel and Gizmo because I would feel bad if we didn't. So let me show you the pictures that we chose. This is the picture that we chose for Pixel. <laughs> with that to draw. Yes, well, who knows? They might incorporate that in the design. And then the one that we chose for Gizmo, I chose this one. And they just come over and they just take a photo of your photo? Yes, it's very easy. You just tell them what kind of coffee drink you want and they take a photo with their phone and we'll see how they turn out. Oh no. It's so cute. It's so cute. Wow. Cute. Perfectly captured pixel. Oh my gosh, that's better than I could even have imagined. I want to pet her, but I don't want to mess her up. She's so jiggly. <laughs> if only she was this jiggly in real life. Oh, so cute. Thank you very much. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't. I can't handle it. She looks so cute here. I don't want to drink it because it's going to destroy her. Oh, you have to. Sorry. So I got a honey tea latte, which sounded delicious. How does Gizmo taste? He tastes good. Since we've been in Japan, I've just been drinking like those bottled iced coffees, which are great, but this it feels good to have like a real nice, warm cappuccino. Just like a hint of honey flavor. Very, like not too sweet at all. Obviously this gets a five out of five. Do we even need to like give these? No. No. He always looks happy. <laughs> Even when he's melting. He's just happy to be here. <laughs> and the opposite of happy is Pixel, who always has this frown face on our face. I love it. And I got, uh, this is a caramel iced latte. I'm not sure if you can see this, but on the back there's like some like shaved nuts and some chocolate sauce. And it tastes like a frappuccino at Starbucks. I don't usually drink coffee, so. Five out of five. Yeah, five out of five. Ordinary Adventure Star for Cafe. Reissue. Pixel's like, no, I'm drowning. Save me. So I think this is the latte artist that actually made Pixel and Gizmo, brought them to life in coffee. Very cool. Pixel survived. The interesting thing is it's perfectly that. It's not just a random generic Pomeranian or generic French Bulldog. That is Pixel and Gizmo. And she got them perfectly down. In Harajuku, the main street with all the cute foods and stuff, is called Takashita Street, and that's where we're going next. One of the things that I was most excited to try in Japan are these candied strawberries. So we went to this place called Strawberry Fetish, and I got myself those strawberries. They're so picturesque. I think it's just strawberries dipped in a sugar that like hardens. I've watched videos of people trying this, and it seems like very difficult to bite into, so. Wish me luck. But they look so good. This is like what you think of when you think of Harajuku and Japan. It's like a dream come true. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have to come here because Strawberry Fetish is like a chain that's all over Tokyo. Mmm. Whoa. Who knew that fruit could be so delicious? <laughs> <laughs> We've been standing out here for about 10 minutes. So maybe like it's not as hard as it like when you first get it because I was expecting to like break a tooth on it. But it wasn't that bad. Oh my god. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but it has such a satisfying crunch. It is so delightful. It really just tastes like a strawberry with like a sugar glaze on it. That's what it is. But I love it. I agree. Ordinary Adventure Star. So next up, we went to Lodoria. This is a fast food chain that's around Japan, but we were just in the mood for like some savory food. We've been 
having a lot of sweet stuff. And I saw the sign that had like some Japanese style fried chicken. I chose to get the one with the Korean spice sauce because that looked the most interesting. So let's try it out. It's more sweet and tangy than spicy, but it does have a spicy kick to it at the end. For a fast food meal, cheap on the run, I'd give this like a four to five Peters. This is solid. I almost wish I got one, one of the melon drinks because my, my mouth is starting to heat up. Another thing I've noticed in Japan is when you go to like a quick serve fast food place, you get like one tiny napkin that's like so thin. I wonder why that is. So I have been following this cat on Instagram for at least five years. I think you've been following an artist, not a cat. Yes. So I never <laughs> knew, I, okay. I never knew that this was like a famous like design in Tokyo. I just thought it, you know, I was like, oh, this is cute. And I followed it a long time ago. And it turns out that it's like a thing here and you could get him. And what I love about him is he's just so cute, but he always is doing stuff like this. He's got like sharks on his head. He's eating a big shrimp. He's the cutest cat ever. And I'm so tempted to buy like all this merch. This is dangerous. We just came across a capsule toy shop. So it's a, a shop just filled with those gachapon machines where you can put some money in and get like a mystery toy. And if you know Kitra, that's gonna be an issue. I wanna at least get one. <laughs> I think I have enough change enough for one. She says one now, but. One, yeah, exactly. One now, and then we'll come back and more later. Oh my God, you can get yourself like a little Tamagotchi. That is so cool. Or do you want like a little bowl of ramen? I kind of do. Look at these Pokemon characters having a picnic. So cute. <laughs> I would want that one. The problem is there's just so many to choose from. It's like, I don't know what to pick. Oh my God, they have over 500 more upstairs. I know what we're doing for the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just found two machines that I might want to do. This one's Back to the Future. Oh look, it has the one from three and it has the one from two with the, the flags hanging down. Yeah, so this is all like the DeLorean it looks like. And then this one over here, you get the hoverboard, you get the flex capacitor. Yeah, and that's like the prototype uh, in Doc's model. You know, he didn't, he didn't have time to build it to scale. Well, I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Which one, did, out of these two, which one do you want? I don't know, which one do I want? <laughs> I guess this one. Is it? You got the Mr. Fusion. Yes. That's pretty cool. That's actually what I wanted. Really? Yeah. Well, you're welcome. I've got the magic touch. Oh, it's a keychain. And the little keychain thing is the Back to the Future logo. That's awesome. Look at this. It actually opens. So yes. you can put your. I was going to say plutonium, but you don't put the plutonium. Can you just put Fusion. trash in it? Yeah. We could use one of these in Japan because there's no trash cans anywhere. I don't know which one to get. You could get them as a shark, as like an ice cream sundae. You could get them inside of like a hamburger bun. I like him and his little friends going down the slide. I like that one too. Oh, it's going to be a hard decision. Which one do you want out of that though? Uh, either one, that one or that one. But I'll take any of them. That one's kind of cute. <laughs> Whatever, this, what is that, like a narwhal? Or like a, I forget what kind of shark this is, but I love his like little belly. He's just like laying there. I like his little paws. It's so cute. <laughs> there are so many more up here and I kind of want to find like the stupidest one I can find to get. <laughs> oh, okay. There's animals in the sauna. There's cats delivering food. <laughs> oh, look at this one. I think you can store your chapstick inside them. <laughs> Okay. They have little oh mini goodness. ladders here. I feel like I want to go for this one just because there is a chance that we could get Pixel. And then like all the other ones are cute too. Oh my god, look what I found over here. What? Oh my god, it's that little robot that we met yesterday. How amazing is that? I kind of want to get one. <laughs> Come on, surfing French Bulldog on lettuce. I got that one. The one that isn't lettuce. Looks like a Pomeranian though. It kind of does, huh? He has a lettuce tail. <laughs> Look at this one. You got like little wooden puzzles. So next up we're going to Sweetbox Crepes. And they have so many different 
crepes here, and some of them are kind of weird. <laughs> like there's this ham potato salad crepe, and then I also found the pizza tuna crepe. I mean, could be good. We don't know what we're missing. But that being said, I think we're gonna get a sweet crepe. Yeah. The one that I decided to get is the caramel apple cheesecake and cream. Looks like a lot, but it looks good. Whenever I go to any restaurant, I always usually ask what's the best thing or what's the most popular thing. And I actually list the six most popular crepes. And I actually wouldn't have <laughs> predicted that these were the most popular. Thank you. Thank you so much. And there are a bunch of different crepe stands, but the one that we decided to go to is called Sweet Box because Peter claims it had the best reviews. I'm not exactly sure how I'm supposed to eat this, but I grabbed a little spoon. <laughs> it's like this teeny tiny spoon. This is absolutely delicious, just as expected. I kind of wish that we got like the tuna one. <laughs> I'm like so intrigued by that. I bet you it's good. Like I love tuna, so oh, whatever. No. There's a reason why I think this is like one of the most popular flavors. Super like creamy with the caramel and then the apples kind of taste like apple pie. I saw them making it and they like literally put a slice of cheesecake. Yeah, there's like a whole cheesecake down there on the side. The crepe itself is actually very good too. Five out of five, come on. Come on, you knew it, we already knew. Get your handed me this with a spoon. I am not using no spoon with the crepe. <laughs> so fluffy. The apple, yeah, tastes like apple pie, yeah. <laughs> I'm just doing it. Just doing it. This is amazing. So when we told people that we were coming to Japan, one place everybody wanted us to visit is McDonald's because McDonald's has different things in different countries. In Japan, they have macarons. They have all sorts of weird, like, different pies. They have what we got is the teriyaki chicken filet. <laughs> I think it's what it's called. And we got it instead of a side of fries. They have edamame and corn. It comes in this cute cup. It feels like a weird side, but up for it. So it looks like it has lettuce and mayo and the teriyaki sauce and that fried chicken patty. If they serve this in America, this would be my go-to McDonald's. Oh, really? It's so good. I mean, I love teriyaki sauce, but this is just perfect. And then you have uh, the signature sesame seed McDonald's bun. I love McDonald's. This is gonna get a five out of five theaters for me. Everything truly is better in Japan. This is just a classic McChicken, but I feel like the breading is different. It's almost better. It's so good, so juicy. Ordinary adventure star, but the thing I'm most intrigued by is this edamame and corn. I love McDonald's french fries, so I'm not sure why anyone would choose this over that. But I gotta say, it looks good, and I love that they give you a little wooden spoon. It tastes like canned corn and edamame. Not much like seasoning on there. I'd probably add some salt and pepper or something, but it's good. It's actually very flavorful for McDonald's. I love that this is like a choice here. <laughs> we also got one of the melon Fantas to drink. This is like the perfect meal. Another thing you learn about Japan is there's really no benches to sit anywhere. And there's signs everywhere like, don't sit here, don't sit there. So one of the reasons we actually went to McDonald's was we just wanted to sit for a few minutes. And to do that, we had to buy something. Pro tip. So pro tip, I'm not sure if that's a pro tip, because we spent money. It's pretty like hectic out there, but we found this little alleyway that's so picturesque and beautiful. Isn't that cool? I used to have one of these when I was a little kid. It's like this little bird that like balances on your finger. Well, you still got it. Still got After it. After all these years. Are you impressed? I'm super impressed. We found a store called Pet Paradise and it's literally just all pet clothes and some toys. I think we need to look in here. <laughs> oh my God, look at this whole outfit. He's got like a Minions backpack. <laughs> this is a vending machine for mystery box toys. Is that what it is? So this store right here, long, longer, longest sells things in three different sizes. They sell them in long, longer, or longest, and they promise that this is the longest in Japan. And I think it's basically a Twisted Tater, which they have at Universal Studios, Halloween Horror Nights. So that's cool. I, I, like that, the t I like the concept here. One place sells, I think that's chocolate ice cream, <laughs> and a container that looks like a urinal. <laughs> <laughs> You could get one with bunny ears on it. Yeah, what? Wait, why would you want poop with bunny ears? I don't know. So when we were coming to Japan, one of my best friends told me that I had to try the dango. And what this is, is a traditional Japanese rice flour dumpling. 
And the flavor that I'm gonna try is the Mitarashi, which is like kind of the traditional one. It has a soy glaze on it. We found this little spot here that has a bunch of different flavors, but we asked him what was the best and he recommended this one. So this is gonna sound super silly, but this is actually an emoji like in, on the iPhone. And I've been looking at it my whole life since I've had an iPhone and I've always wondered what it was and I wanted to try it. Now I'm here and I'm trying it. This is so hard to describe. It kind of reminds me of like mochi. The little dumpling itself has like a sweet taste to it, but the sauce is what gives it that extra flavor. It's almost like biting into a marshmallow, like a toasted marshmallow or something. Like in, the consistency is really, really chewy. Now I, I want to go in and try like every flavor. I'm happy I tried it. I want you to try it. I'm gonna give it, I'll give it a five because I mean, come on. It's awesome. Oh, it is like... Like a marshmallow. A marshmallow, but more like squishy and like dense in the mar marshmallow. You know, when you gave it a five, I was like, I'm not going to give it a five, but I think this is something you got to try if you come to Japan. Yes, it's like a must. Ordinary adventure stuff. I'm so happy we tried it. We had these grand plans of trying all these places here, but we're used to doing that in Disney and the serving sizes in Disney are much smaller. Like it's actually real serving sizes here. So I don't think we can eat as much as we wanted to. Oh wow, this crepe place had animals. Dang it, we should have got the pig. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna leave Takashita Street and go explore some more of Harajuku, including the Tokyo Plaza, which has this like really awesome photo op. We got a couple photos and I highly recommend this. There wasn't even like a line of people waiting. This is like our little secret. Stuff, we're going to this other place that a lot of people recommend it. It's called Kitty Land, and it's a five-story toy store. And it's been around for a long time, since 1950. And apparently in the basement is Snoopy Town. So we're gonna have to check out Snoopy Town. Oh my God, honey, they have all your little guys. I know, they have the cat that I love, but he's like dressed up in a gizmo outfit. Just kidding, I think it's like a Shiba dog, but still. That's so cute. They have little coffee cups. They even have like, a little like sandwich set that has them writing down the oh, slide. Yeah, that was the, the thing that you could have won. Yeah. Dang, now I'm regretting I didn't get that. Oh my god, look at all of them. This is insane. Look at this one. It's like he's Shamu from SeaWorld. It's so ridiculous and amazing. I love it so much. You didn't get the hamburger gachapon, but you could get the hamburger. What is that? Like a little pad of paper? Yeah. I think it's like a little card. Or a 2024 calendar of him as a milkshake. Look at this, you can buy like a little booth from a diner. Yeah, that's amazing. If I was a kid, I would be all over this. That is amazing. I don't want to be all over it, but we just don't have the space in the house, even though it's tiny. I feel like Snoopy Town is like the nickname that our friend David at Fresh Bake would give like a Snoopy theme park. Growing up, I never really loved the Peanuts characters or Charlie Brown, but I always loved Snoopy. And there's a reason because he is so cute. I think that's why we got Snoopy Town down here. Who's that again? Is that? Olaf. That's Olaf, yeah. one of Snoopy's brothers. Butt check right here. A good one. I feel like you're the number one Olaf fan. Yeah, not Olaf from Frozen. This Olaf, he's better. I'm telling you, the Japanese and their hand towels. They love their hand towels. They also have so much more Miyazaki merchandise in Japan. It's unfair. It's really unfair. I found quite possibly the best mystery box thing I've ever seen in my life. It's little animals, like with sleeping bags that are made out of food. What? That's so weird. It's so cute. Every so cute. floor of this place is just filled with toys. It's insane. Why? Why? Why do I want it? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Jet lag is a real thing, and it's really hitting us hard. So we decided to go back to the hotel and maybe like take a rest for an hour or two. 
and then maybe we'll go back out. But the good news is, we got back to the hotel on the hour, so we can finally see Godzilla blow fire, I think. You gotta hope. I didn't realize they still have cigarette vending machines here. So you can just pay for cigarettes. Crazy, crazy. Cool. It was basically just like a strobe light in his mouth, but it yeah. was still awesome. I like that they played music to like warn everybody it was gonna happen. Well, this is Godzilla Street, so the music plays throughout the street. That's pretty cool. I feel like in Diagon Alley, they should play music for the dragon. I will sorrow about this in three seconds. Okay. Uh, three, two, one. Two. Oh, Whoa. it's magic. It is magic. Yeah. <laughs> Could you please touch one of your favorite card? Diamond, thank you. Uh, the color has just changed now. Wow, red card. <laughs> please check. This is your diamond. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to your shoulder? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, what? Why? I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Yeah, this is American coin. Oh, is it a quarter? Oh, yeah. Or, oh, oh, it's a me. dollar yeah. or whatever. Oh, you can check. It's magic. Hey. <laughs> After seeing Godzilla, we were approached by a street magician here in Shinjuku, and he showed us a couple magic tricks, which totally made my day. And he was awesome. So, shout out to him. We gave him a tip, and then he turned the tip into a different currency. <laughs> So a few hours later, we went out and tried to find dinner at some place in Shinjuku, but it was very hard because a lot of the places are very small, and it was Friday night, and every place was packed. But we eventually found a gyoza restaurant about 10 minutes away from our hotel. And first off, I ordered myself a strawberry sour. And I'm not actually sure what is in this, so we're gonna find out together. I think it's some kind of Japanese alcohol and then strawberry. So there's only like a slight strawberry taste here. It seems like it, they mix the strawberry with some kind of like Japanese alcohol, almost like shoju or something. It's not too sweet. I like it, don't love it. I'd give it like three and a half out of five. And then I just got a draft beer, some kind of cheap Japanese beer. Not sure what it was, but I just wanted beer. So that's what I got. It's good, After, especially after waiting. We waited like 30 minutes to come in here. So it, it just hits differently and it gets a five out of five. <laughs> so first up, I ordered the yaki gyoza, and yaki actually means pan fried, and this is pan fried dumplings, which... Which is what we wanted to eat for dinner, so we're, we were like searching and searching. Yeah, we like did a Google search, and we like actually walked to one place, and they were like, nope, full. <laughs> so we went to the second best place. Yeah. Juicy. I don't think you even need a dip. For this, this is a good dumpling. It's it's small, but it's delicious. I told you it was juicy. <laughs> Wasn't this place called like the Juicy Dumpling Place? Yeah. So it makes sense. You guys, we are in Japan eating with chopsticks at a little restaurant in the middle of Shinjuku. Pinch me. This is crazy. Ordinary adventure star. So I did make a little dipping sauce with some hot oil and I think some vinegar and some soy sauce. I'm not 100% sure of what my mixture is, but I'm going to try it. That just makes it even better. Really? Mm -hmm. See, I didn't think it needed to be any more juicy. 
gives it like a little bit of a spice and like a tang. Oh, you would you would like that. It's All like right. a hot sauce, but it's like a hot oil. Delicious. We're gonna have to get like a few more rounds of these, I think. <laughs> I also ordered some gyoza, and this is basically the same thing, just boiled dumplings and soup. I had to try both varieties. I feel like these ones are gonna be extra juicy. Oh. Am I supposed to eat it with a spoon? <laughs> so these are just as good as the other ones, except they're softer because they've been boiled. And then the soup adds like an extra rich flavor to them with those green onions on top. I don't know which ones I like more. Really? They're yeah. both really good. I usually like fried dumplings. This kind of tastes like a wonton soup. I know it's not a wonton soup, but that's what kind of yeah. what it reminds me of. Very, very good. Also gets a five. I'm sorry. Sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Isn't it good? I think I like the other one a little bit more, but the texture on this, it's just like... So good. So good. I'll give it up. Yeah, Ordinary Adventure Star. <laughs> so, in New York City, there's 30,000 restaurants. How many restaurants do you think there is in Tokyo? 30 million. 160,000. <laughs> I was close. You, you, you were a little off. But the thing is, like, here, a lot of the restaurants are super small. So the restaurant we're in right now, I think, fits, like, about 50 people maximum. If that. If that. And this is one of the bigger restaurants that we were, like, looking at, eating at. There's some restaurants that only seat, like, five, ten people. So it's, it's very different. I am so incredibly full from that meal. And it was, like... 5,400 yen, which equates to like $33 American, which is insane for that amount of food in a city. In a city, it's insane. For that and amount. I got two beers. I got two beers and you got a drink and we're full. Oh, I didn't even think about the drinks. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. If you want to see the rest of our Japan adventures, put the videos right over there. I want to say thank you to some of our Patreons. That includes Shannon, Lisa, and Michael. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.